Hey guys, Kara Shifty here with another review. This time I'll be reviewing the Bakuryu Action Series 4, Parasorokiru from Bakuryu Sentai Abba Ranger. Parasorokiru is the Bakuryu evolution of the Parasorophis, and was the fourth of the lost Bakuryu to be discovered by the Abba Rangers. This includes two things, Parasorokiru and its corresponding dino plate. Now before I go into the review proper, I'm going to answer a couple of questions that I imagine might come up. The first one being, what's Bakuryu Action Series 3? And that would be Brachiosaurus, which is not necessarily an essential part of the Baku Reaction series, specifically because it isn't quite made to interact with the Baku Gatais, and is more made as a standalone toy. And the second one would be what was the third lost Baku, and that would be Stego Slidon, which I covered in my review of Killero. So if you want to see what I have to say about Sego Sly and go and watch my Killer Row review. Anyway, on to the review. So of course we'll look at the dino plate first. Cast in the same green plastic as Parasorokiru. Has silver and gold paint detailing. And an eye hole, no eye cover. Has all the molding detail it needs to have. And the copyright information molded onto the back. So I'll bring in my dino brace right here, push it on, and place it on the dino plate, then see what sound it makes. So as can be heard and seen, it makes the same sound as the pteranodon plate, meaning it has the same peg set, but of course it also has a second peg set for use with the Dino Commander, which I don't have, but like I've said in the past, I plan to get, and when I do get it eventually, I will come back to this. So, moving on to the Bakuryu itself. So, Parasorokiru is a pretty ordinary Bakuryu. It basically looks like a robotic dinosaur. It doesn't look too out of the ordinary. Now, as far as the Parasaurolophus goes, it was a kind of Bakri... No, no. The Parasaurolophus was a... was classified among a kind of dinosaur called a Hadrosaur, or a duck-billed dinosaur, and that goes into its mouth, which, well, at least as far as biology goes, was... well, looked like what a modern-day duck modern day duck's bill looked like, and that was used in its method of eating. Specifically, it would use that mouth to clip leaves off of branches and then eat them. And even though that's a pretty, that's a pretty small defined characteristic for a dinosaur, that went into the way this toy was designed. Because the first thing to look at are its hands, which are kind of uh, scissor-like. Though since it's a solid molded piece, uh, they stay in place. Articulation-wise, you can rotate its head side to side, open and close its mouth as I've shown, move its arms up and down, and move its legs back and forward. Its gimmick comes into play with its tail, which is also called the tail chopper for this reason. Take this when you pull back this tab, you see that the tail opens up and closes like a pair of scissors. Hence the name tail chopper. And so that that feature basically stem, stemmed from the hadrosaur's method of eating. Also has this crest here, but uh, as far as anyone knows is just crest with no real significance. At least as far as I know, I could be wrong. So, yeah, we got this feature here. And we also see that there are uh, grooves and indents made for the shape of the tail to adapt to the uh, diamond pattern that's, that runs down its back and onto its tail. So anyway, now that that's out of the way, we can transform it to combine with Abareno. 
So it's a pretty simple process. Let's fold the legs back, fold the arms down, and rotate the head 180 degrees. So now bring in my Abareno substitute. Set it up. To, to perform the Bakri you combine, you take off the tail drill, place on Parasarokiru, and it's complete. So now you have a Bareno Rokiru. So now we have it as the arm. And it has that, and right here you've got this little part with the Abaranger tribal detailing. But unlike the uh, tribal detailing that was on Baki Karo Knuckles, this is just a plain gold paint and not chromed out. In fact, out of the Baki Reaction series, the only two to have chrome are Baki Karo Knuckles and Brachiosaurus. But anyway, so now we can move up the arm, and an interesting thing that goes along with the gearing is that as you move the arm up and down when you don't have it on, the tail chopper's acting gimmick will go off as it's moved up and down. But to properly activate it and simulate its attack choky choky scissors, just flip the switch here. Like Bucky Caro Knuckles, this is a hydraulic motion, but it isn't a continuous motion. Rather, every few cycles it'll click once and move the tail chopper up and down. But unlike Baki Kara Knuckles, it works in either Mode A or Mode B. Since this is more of a thing where it hits a certain spot at, that makes the tail activate, rather than winding back and then releasing. So, bring that back to normal. Perosorokiru's name is rather simple, and basically this has to do with the dinosaur it's based off and its acting feature. The first part comes from the dinosaur it's based off, Perosorolphus, and the second part comes from Kiru, the Japanese word for cut, as clearly cutting is its gimmick. Panning the camera back down. Both Parasaurokiru's mold and the mold for its template were released in America, but through separate means. Parasaurokiru, or the Parasaurus Sword, as it's known in America, was released along the Ankylo Sword in a Dinosaur set that came with additional uh, original made cells and a Triassic Ranger figure. And the Dino Plate came with the White Dragomorpher. However, there were changes to both. As far as Parasaurokiru goes, it remained mostly unchanged, though unfortunately it had the copyright information basically branded on its underside. The dial plate, on the other hand, was changed a bit more. They changed up the paint, basically make it so that you don't have these three individual lines, but that they just painted this whole part silver to go with the top part. And like the Demonokodon American plate, they changed it from being molded with, from the same plastic as the Zord is based on, and instead, like the other kind of plates, made it some tinted translucent plastic that was just painted over. Additionally, while it actually did have the same peg sets, so it would work on in the Japanese changers, something they did to it made it rather loose-fitting, so it doesn't quite properly work or properly fit onto the Dino Morphers or the Upper Ranger changers. So, personally, I would recommend just buying the set so that you can get both the Baku and the down plate rather than having to go for the American version and 
get these two fruit from two different things. And once again, this is a fun addition to the Baku Reaction series. It has a nice gimmick, and well, as far as Super Sentai goes, a cutter action or scissor feature is not something that's really been too common at all. Like, there might be stuff with pincer features or pincer features, but not really this kind of scissor action. So, definitely recommended to Down Thunder fans or Ava Ranger fans. So, please rate, comment, subscribe, and check out my channel for more videos. And for now, this is KRX50, riding off.